Hello friends, welcome to Devs Coding Hub. Today we are starting a new series on Photoshop CS3 and this is the part 1 of the series. So let us start without wasting any time. What is Photoshop? Photoshop is an application software for image editing, touch up, color correction, painting and drawing. It was designed and developed by Thomas and John Knoll in 1987 and later they sold the software to Adobe Systems. Now let us see how to start Photoshop. To start Photoshop, you have to click on start button, go to all programs or programs and then click on Adobe Photoshop CS3. If you do so, we will be able to see the application loading. After end of Photoshop, CS3 is loaded onto the computer screen. It is shown like this. You can see the window of end of Photoshop when it is loaded. Now let us see how to create a new file in Photoshop. For this, in the Photoshop window, we need to click on File menu and then click on New. Once you click on New, we will get the new dialog box as it is shown in the left side of the window. The new dialog box gives us the ability to set the properties of the newly created document. Remember by default the first file created in Microsoft sorry out of Photoshop is untitled hyphen one. So this is the default name given to the first file. And there are some presets that means size presets using which you can change the size of the document. In this case the default Photoshop size is selected and it is 7 by 5 inches. 7 inches in width and 5 inches in height. Followed by this we have the resolution. The term resolution means the number of dots that represents per square inch. The tiny dots that forms the picture on the screen are called picture elements or pixels. So per inch how many pixels will be there horizontally and vertically it is called the resolution of the image. So here the resolution of the image is 72, you can follow the cursor and the color mode we have chosen is RGB, it is red, green, blue, it is a three color, color mode and then the color bit is 8 bit and the background contents are initially white. If I click on OK, a new file will be created and it will be shown as it is shown on the right side of the window. Now let us know the different components of the Adobe Photoshop CS3 window. The topmost bar on the application window is called the title bar as because it shows the title of the application as it is showing Adobe Photoshop CS3 extended as a title. And then followed by the name of the file that is loaded. And the far right side of the title bar has three window buttons minimize, restore and maximize then close button. Beneath the title bar we have the menu bar. It contains a list of menu options that we can use in Photoshop. 
So menus are nothing but list of options that show some operations that can be performed in Adobe Photoshop CS3. Beneath the menu bar, we have the options bar. The option bars, option bar changes as you select a particular tool in the toolbox. By the way, this is the toolbox. This contains the tools that are used in Photoshop. Now, as I when, as and when I select a particular tool, the option bar changes according to the tool. So it basically displays the options that are available for a particular tool. Just below the options bar, we have the horizontal ruler. And here also, just to the right of the toolbar, if it is normally placed, we have the vertical ruler. And this is the document window where the file is opened and we can do any kind of editing. At the bottom of the Photoshop window we have the status bar. It displays the status of different activities in Photoshop. And in the right side of the window we have the palette wells. There are three palettes are displayed in the palette wheel. Now let us discuss the components of Photoshop window one by one. The first one is the title bar. As I have already said, title bar is a rectangular bar at the top of the Photoshop window that displays the application name and the name of the open file. The next component is menu bar. Menu bar is a rectangular bar just beneath the title bar that displays different menus available for the different tasks. The next component we are going to discuss about is options bar. The options bar is a rectangular bar just beneath the menu bar that displays different options for the selected tool. That means the tool we have selected for that tool some options will be displayed in the options bar. The next component is status bar. Status bar is always shown at the bottom of the Photoshop window. It is a rectangular bar that displays information specific to the active document. Next one is ruler. The ruler provides and allows us to set measurement in width as well as height of the image. So you have both horizontal ruler as well as vertical ruler. The next most important component of Photoshop in CS3 is toolbox. The toolbox is a rectangular box displayed at the left side of the Photoshop document that hold all the tools available to create and edit images. Now let us start discussing the components of the toolbox in detail. So this is the Photoshop toolbox. A lot of tools are available in the Photoshop toolbox. The first tool that is displayed at the top left corner of the toolbox is called the marquee tool. We can access this marquee tool by pasting the M key on the keyboard. It is a selection tool. The next tool is the move tool. It can be accessed by the shortcut V or by pressing the V key. It is used to move components in different layers in Photoshop. It is also used for 
selecting any object in Photoshop. The third one is lasso tool. It is also a selection tool. The L key is used for lasso tool. The fourth tool is magic one tool. It is also a selection tool. It can be accessed by using W. And followed by the crop tool which is used to reduce the size of an image and crop or deduct unwanted part of an image. Then the sixth tool is slice tool. It can be accessed by using the shortcut key K. Then J is used for accessing spot healing brush tool. Followed by this we have the brush tool that can be accessed by using the shortcut B. Similarly the other tools are clone stamp tool accessed by S, history brush tool accessed by Y, erase tool for erasing components, erasing artwork, it can be accessed by E, followed by the gradient tool to make a gradient effect in Photoshop, we can use the gradient tool and it can be accessed by G. Then we have the blur tool can be accessed by R, dodge tool accessed by O, followed by pen tool accessed by P, then horizontal type tool or type tool accessed by T, then we have the path selection tool accessed by the key A, custom shape tool that is accessed by using U, notes tool that can be accessed by N, eyedropper tool to pick color is used by is accessed by the key I then the hand tool accessed by the key H zoom tool to magnify or reduce the size of the image and it can be accessed by Z and these two objects are showing as the foreground color and the background color the foreground color is the color using which we can draw, we can type, we can do any kind of writing on the Photoshop. And the background color specifies the background color of the Photoshop document. And two more tools are there. Edit in Quick Marks tool can be accessed by Q and change screen mode which can be accessed by F. It is used to change the screen mode. Remember we can interchange this foreground and background color by using a shortcut X. If I press the X key background color white will now become the foreground color and the foreground color black will become the background color. So X stands for exchange so it is used for exchanging background and foreground color. Similarly, if we have changed foreground and background color to any other color, like uh, take the example, foreground is red and background is yellow. Suppose we want to come back to the default color. Then we can press D. It will take us back to the default color in Photoshop. The next component of Photoshop window is the palettes. Palettes also known as panes are floating boxes at the right side of the Photoshop window. Palettes are used to hold information or options for the active document. Palettes are labeled with tabs to represent different information or options. That's all for today. If you have liked the video, please subscribe my channel. Don't forget to like and share. And please press the notification bell for reminders on my videos. Thank you.